Hi guys, and thank you so much for watching. Today I have some questions about Australian Shepherds, and I'm going to try to help you with them. So I've got Luca here. <laughs> what are you doing, sleepy girl? I've got Luca here with me, and we are going to talk about some dog stuff. Luca has a new Instagram. If any of you guys are Instagrammers, make sure that you check it out. She's got a lot of really cute pictures and videos and even some of her slow motion videos. So that is at LucasSage and you'll see more of this. <laughs> Why are you so sleepy? One thing that I wanted to tell you guys that her behavior um, <laughs> is leading me to anyway, because I get so many questions about Aussies and a lot of people writing me that they want to get them as their next dog or that they've gotten one and um, I know that a lot of people that maybe don't have experience with Aussies are basing the breed off of Luca um, and possibly Annie, my mom's miniature Australian Shepherd who's in a lot of my other Australian Shepherd videos. Um, and one thing about her is that she's just about to turn three, aren't you? But she is the possibly the most docile Australian Shepherd that I've known and she's been pretty calm like she definitely gets wild and I'm sure you guys have seen when she goes outside and stuff like that um, and when she goes to go play with her friends and stuff so I wouldn't say that if you have a two-year-old or even a three-year-old Aussie that you should expect them to be like this she just happens to be a very calm girl and she hasn't really been that big of a problem for me. Altogether, I've had five Australian Shepherds, and some of them have definitely been a lot more difficult to raise than she has. So, um, she's a wonderful example of the breed, but I think she's a little bit tricky because she's not actually as rambunctious as a lot of them are. So, I had a question in my inbox from a fellow YouTuber, and her name is Little T Fox, and she has a four and a half month old Australian Shepherd that she got. She started watching my channel from my Aussie videos, so that's awesome. And so she has her pretty new puppy and she's been having problems with the dog biting and not wanting to learn that she shouldn't bite. So I wrote her back and then I started thinking, because it's kind of hard once your dog is through that stage to think of all the techniques that you used. So I started brainstorming a few different techniques and ideas that could possibly help. And if any of you guys are having any chewing problems with your dog, no matter what breed it is, um, they can possibly help you and you can remember them for the future. So the first thing is, I guess, when your dog is going through any sort of stage, as puppies tend to do, you sort of think, am I doing something wrong or is something wrong with my dog? Am I the only one that's going through this? And when your dog is grown up and mostly well trained, as Luca is, it feels really good because you don't have to worry about it, but sometimes when your dog is going through some crazy stage, you just feel like, does this say something about my life because I can't drink my dog and it's going crazy and is it going to just keep growing and just going crazier and crazier and I won't be able to handle it? So the answer is a four and a half month old dog is a baby because they only leave their parents when they're eight weeks to ten weeks old, which is two months. So the dog has only been away from their mom for a couple of months. And they really are essentially a baby, or if you want to think of it this way, they're like a toddler or even a teenager, kind of. So they're going through a lot of really weird stuff. So biting, destroying furniture, chewing up all of your stuff, anything that you leave out, it's exactly what you can expect them to do, so you don't have to freak out and there's nothing wrong with your dog, um, there's nothing wrong with you, and as long as you try as best as you can to train them, you will get through it. So the most important advice that I have in any realm of dog training problem that you have is that you have to be consistent and you have to persevere, which is just great advice for life, I guess. Sometimes they keep doing it and you just think, I'm never going to get through this, and you think that's not working, which is a scary thought because having a rambunctious, crazy dog that's biting is sounds like a really big pain and once they grow up to be 40 pounds or bigger uh, it could be a big problem but the main thing that you have to do is stay consistent don't feel like you can't do it because four and a half months is so young they're going through so much and they're going to be changing so much that as long as you stay consistent and you do the best that you can 
they are definitely going to change. They're going to go through other stages that are going to make you insane, but they're going to get through it. And with the tips that I have, these are just a few things that I've tried and that have worked for me. There are so many methods of training dogs and so many different ways that you can do it. With anything, you, like I said, you need to make sure it's consistent. So that means not only with you, if you're the dog's main parent, if you have kids or if you have roommates, it's especially hard with people like that because they're not exactly in your family and you all haven't raised dogs together so you don't all have the same techniques and the same beliefs about it so it can be difficult but what I would recommend doing if you have kids or roommates or if you're raising it with your husband or something like that um, you just have to sit down and say okay this is a dog meeting <laughs> and don't make it really serious so that everybody feels awkward but just say this is what we're going to do in order to get this dog raised properly and it's your dog so it's up to you to be able to say that and you don't have to feel bad laying down a few rules about how your dog needs to be treated. So for example, Luca is not allowed to get up onto the couch or the bed unless I tell her or the per somebody else invites her up there. So they have to tell her, okay, which is, you know, it's our word for like when I tell her to sit and then I tell her, okay, she can eat her dinner or if she's there I can tell her, okay, and she can get up here. So it's hard when other friends come over and she tricks them because she's just looking really cute and she's like, please, just let me up here. And if they just kind of go like that, she'll take it as a yes. So I had to tell all my friends, as they came to know her, I would tell her, like, tell them, this is her rule. She's not allowed up on the couch unless you guys tell her because I don't want her thinking that her rule is fluid. And she's also not allowed to go outside unless I tell her okay because I don't want her to run out of the door when... I just have it open. You can put in a million hours of work and then if your kid or your roommate or something like that just lets them walk all over them because it's not their dog, it's not as difficult for them or maybe they just don't know, then it's going to be undoing the rules because to the dog they don't know that, you know, that's not their main parent. So it's just going to be confusing for them. With any type of dog, but especially with the Aussies, it's really important to always make sure they're getting a ton of exercise, a ton of attention, and I just can't really emphasize enough the exercise. I would never play any like mouthy games with them like because when they're babies it's easy just to let them chew on your fingers or kind of play games like that but it's really not helpful because as they grow it's just going to cause a problem so if you have a younger puppy just don't let them do that in the first place. It's also they're teething so they love putting their teeth on everything and you might notice you might even find a little tooth or you might find some blood on a chew toy or something like that. And that's okay, that's just because they're teething and their baby teeth are falling out and they're just going through a lot. So if you were playing like this and she started biting you, the first thing I would do is just say, I don't want to do it because she's doing the right thing. But you would say no in a really stern voice. My mom calls it the mean, well, we call it when my mom would do it to the horses and dogs, the mean mommy voice. Because it's very, you want to get down into your like base regions of your voice and just say no very sharply. And that, if that doesn't work, which it probably won't always work or it won't be enough, you can hold their muzzle a little bit and sometimes they might squeal because they don't like it, but you can hold it tightly and tell them no, like that. If they're biting you, you actually sort of go with the motion of what they're doing and you actually kind of just gently gag them which they won't like and they'll learn that if they do that you're going they're going to get a finger in their throat then they're not going to like it. I'll show you kind of gently on her and then she's going to get mad but give me. you would just kind of get back in their throat. It doesn't hurt them but they don't like it. Additionally, if they keep doing it, they have to learn that if they keep doing it, they don't get to be with you and play because that's what they want to do, especially Australian Shepherds. All they love is humans. So they want to be with you more than anything and they want to be playing. So if they start biting you and you put them down and you take them away from the situation, they're not going to like that. And they're going to learn that they can't be mouthy and they can't bite or else they're not going to get to stay with everyone. Also, if you do have a lot of kids or roommates or people in your house, 
sometimes they just get really riled up because there are so many people there and they get so excited and they want to be with you but it's just they're just going with their own nature so it's like kind of like trying to be cool for the older kids and so they'll start biting because that's just one of their reactions especially because at four and a half months they're still in nature they would be with their litter mates the other puppies and so they're just looking for somebody like the other puppies to play with them so if they learn that if they behave like that they won't be able to stay with you they'll understand that you're not just a lowly other puppy that they can do that to and they'll also want to not bite because they want to be with you one thing that I did with Luca when she was a puppy was instead of having a bunch of different chew toys laying all around I got her a few of the same toy and I tried to keep it very consistent with what she was allowed to chew and I would keep those in her bed which I crate trained her for a little while while she was young but then we got Annie and they wanted we wanted to keep them together when we went away so we would um, just keep them in the bathroom instead of the crates because we didn't have a big enough crate for the two of them but we would keep the toys in their bed whenever you go and pick up you know you just put them in there so they learn that those are theirs and because there can be so many things around on the floor there can be shoes or furniture or whatever and um, if they have a bunch of different toys it's kind of confusing for them because it's like all of these toys are okay for me to chew but all of those other things that are on the floor like your laptop case or your expensive shoes or something like that those all look like their toys too and the reason that they chew your most precious things which makes you want to pull your hair out is because it smells like you and it's most important to you and they love you so much that they're just going to show you by ripping up your stuff so help them succeed by not leaving anything out that's important because they're going to chew it you're going to be furious and you guys are just both going to be really upset so don't leave out anything around on the floor that they might chew. One way you can do that is to get them these marrow bones, which I don't have any that are uneaten, so I can't show you what they look like. They come from the meat section of the grocery store. Sometimes you have to ask the butcher for them because they might keep them in the back sometimes, but they're usually frozen and there's meat in the middle and there's meat around the outside and they're just soup bones, so they're really cheap. You can usually get a pack of six. It's on like you know, a styrofoam thing that meat comes on. Um, you can get a pack of six for about three dollars, so it's about fifty cents each. And these are awesome because dogs can't eat cooked bones, but raw bones are extremely important for them, for their teeth, and as part of their diet. And you know that all the ingredients in them, because it's only one ingredient, are healthy and it's not just some treat that just has a bunch of gross stuff that I don't know what they're trying to get rid of from the chicken factory or something. This is just pure meat and that's all and they absolutely love it. And the great thing about these is you keep them in the freezer and we call them pupsicles. <laughs> and especially for teething puppies, it can help numb their gums and help it make, make it feel better. So this is just a great thing. I give them to her like once a week or something like that and then I just let her have the bone for a little bit to chew on. Um, but for puppies, it's just awesome for them to have around. In terms of furniture and anything that is, in terms of furniture and anything that you can't move out of their area, um, they have a few different sprays. I don't have a particular one to recommend, but I would look up some holistic ones that you can spray onto your furniture and it doesn't mess it up or anything. And it has some different oils and different things in it that dogs don't like. And so it'll deter them from doing that. Now she's okay, but I wouldn't have probably left her out until she was at least two. I didn't leave her out while I was gone because I knew that I would just find something that she had destructed. And also I blame Annie a little bit because she <laughs> loves getting into trouble. Do crate training if you want to get into that or just have an area where you can contain them so that as soon as you leave, they're not just failing everything that you're teaching. So that's pretty much it on that advice. I hope that this helps you, little T-Fox, and I hope that it helps anybody else who's having similar questions. Um, please let me know if there are any other specific questions about it. I'd be happy to answer, and I always love to see your comments and your questions. And Luca, you are just the most lethargic little thing right now.
Luca's obviously going to go take a nap, and I hope that you guys will subscribe to her as well as me on Instagram, but especially her because she has the cutest pictures. Oh, I just got some new stickers for James and I, and if you get one of our posters, I will send you one of the stickers for free. And Luca's in the poster too, so if you want to help support our YouTube channels and if you like our videos, definitely check those out. I'll put the link in the description box so that you can go to it. Um, Playlist Live is coming up and I'd love to sign posters at Playlist so make sure you get your orders in. We're going to print them this upcoming week. So I will show you what the stickers look like and I hope you go check out the posters and um, I'd love to sign some for you guys. I hope you guys have a lovely week. I've been super super busy. I feel like my head is exploding, but I'm really happy that I got to make this video and talk about puppies, and I hope that if you have any more Australian Shepherd questions, you will leave them for me because I love talking about Aussies. So I will talk to you guys soon, and I hope you have a great day. Bye! And she's snoring. Did I wake you up? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, I'm just trying to film a video.